I'm going to let you work your way through these problems because he's asking you to make some educated guesses and then he's going to introduce you to the empirical rule. But first, let me note that the entire area under graph is one. That's because the area under a curve represents a probability. And when we work with a probability distribution, the sum of all the probabilities has to be one. Okay, so you work through these problems, pause the video, and then once you're done, restart. Hey, welcome back. Glad you worked through those problems. <laughs> what you're going to discover is that when we have a normal distribution, we can use an empirical rule to talk about what percentage of the values are within a certain amount of standard deviations. So 68 is plus or minus one standard deviation away from the mean. 95 or uh, above and below two standard deviations, so plus or minus two, and then 99.7 plus or minus three. And we flip this page over. If you were building a reference sheet, I would say this has got to go on your reference sheet. Now, uh, in our stats class, we use slightly different percentages here. We use 34 and 34 instead of 34.1. And then it's like something that they're slightly different here. The key point here is that the empirical rule is a way to approximate things. These are not exact values, and there's um, some disagreement on what exact ones should be used. Connect Math uses these, so you stick with these percentages when you when you answer questions. So our author loves M&Ms, maybe as much as I love Lego. I don't know. Probably not, because I really love Lego. Okay, so he can't get enough of them, and when he buys a bag of them, he does not want to be shorter. He wants his full amount. So according to this joshmadison.com, the mean number of M&Ms in a standard vending machine bag is 54.6 with a standard deviation of 1.3. Now, we're going to assume that packaging is normally distributed. Um, And he says it more than likely is. Yeah, probably. So we're going to fill in the blanks below with our values. Well, um, we know that the center is the mean. And he actually has that listed for us as X bar. Now, if we believe that this 54.6 is the mean for all uh, M&Ms, we would actually probably write that as mu instead of X bar. I'm going to copy this graph because I don't like writing the book. And then we do one, two, three, perfectly, dis perfect distance apart. I'm amazing at this, right? So we got 54.6, that's our mean. What we would then do is take 54.6 and add to it 1.3, and that becomes the number right here. So that would be, in this case, 55.9. We would then add 1.3 to this number to get the next tick mark. That's the sound of me using a calculator. I'm a little bit ashamed of myself, but you can't see my face, so it's okay. And then I add one more time and I get the number of the final number, 58.5. So this is the mean. This is plus one standard deviation above. This is plus two standard deviations above the mean. This would be plus three standard deviations above the mean. That's what this plus three S plus two S and plus S mean. So when we go in this direction, we subtract. 54.6 minus 1.3, that would be 53.3 would be this value. Subtract again, and that would be what? That should just be a 52, right? Um, and then finally, subtract 1.3 one more time, and this would be three standard deviations below the mean. So again, using that same notation, I would do minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 in terms of the number of standard deviations we are away from the mean. All right, let's answer some questions. So his first question says, um, if you buy a thousand packages of M&Ms, which he believes he's surpassed already, whatever, how many bags would you expect to have between 53 and 56 M&Ms in it? Well, we're going to have to assume that when he says 53, he means 53.3. And when he says 56, he means 55.9. If not, then we really can't answer that question without some more high power statistics. And if, again, if you're really excited about this stuff, you should take 133. So if we're assuming it's between here, recall that the amount of area between these two is 34.1, 34.1. And so the percent that are between there is 68.2%. 
So if we want to know how many of the thousand packages would have that many, we convert this to its decimal, 0.682, and we multiply times 1,000, and this is the number of bags that would have between 53 and 56 M&Ms. So we're looking at around 682 bags. All right. Next question says, it's likely that over 99% of the bags have between blank and blank. Well, what we're using here is back on the previous page, the empirical rule said that 99.7% are within three standard deviations of the mean. So for this question, which is question 14, um, most likely it's between 50.7 and 58.5. So he's being just a little bit sloppy. Uh, well, I mean, I shouldn't say sloppy. Um, He's just he's he's just not being very accurate in terms of of how his language here. He should probably say 99.7 would be between this. I'm guessing what he wants us to write here because it's difficult to calculate what 0.7 of an M&M &M is. He's probably wanting us to think between 51 and 59. So then the last one is what percentage of bags would you expect to have at least 55 M&Ms? That would be 55 or above. Again, because our mean is 54.6, we technically can't answer this, but we're going to assume he's thinking we were supposed to make that a 55. And for number 15, we would say 50% because that's above half. So he's treating this as 55. 16 says, what percentage have less than 52? Well, 52 is an exact value. So this is one case where we can say exactly how what percent. Well, I shouldn't say exactly. We can use the empirical rule to estimate a fairly exact value. Note that between 50.7 and 52, that's 2.2%. And below 50.7 is 0.1%. And where I'm getting that is our handy empirical rule um, from this graph. So two standard deviations away between uh, the three and the two, that's 2.2% of the data. And then below three standard deviations is 0.1. So the answer to number 16, less than 52, what percent? Well, that's 2.31%. That's just the sum of these two values. That's a really small percentage. How bad would that stink? I mean, I don't know how many people actually open up their m and bag and count how many they have and then call the company and complain if it's four, if they were shorted four or five m and I have not done that yet. Okay, so then the question says, how unusual would it be to get a bag with 58 m and Well, 58 is here-ish. So that is about... Um, about 0.1% chance of having over 58 or having 58 or above. And then we already calculated this previous one, that 2.3. That's highly unusual. That's very unusual because that's 2.3% of uh, chance. In general, if it's less than 5% chance of something happening, we say it's unusual.